This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Joining us today for a cup of coffee is the the tricycle of coffee with Kenobi. I am, of course, your host, Dan Zare, joined by the co-creator of Corey Club, Coffee with Kenobi. I yes. I that just to see if you're paying attention. I'm here. Yes, exactly. Am I the right <laughs> wheel or the left wheel? How does that work? It just depends on the day, the, day, the time, the, brakes? the topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Usually I'm the breaks to get you Yahoo's uh, focused. <laughs> no, it's actually not a problem at all. It's quite great to have you both on. The other member of the tricycle is Mr. Tom Gross. Hello, everybody. So glad to be here on Coffee with Kenobi. We're going to talk some celebration, right? We're going to talk some celebration. Star Wars Celebration Europe wrapped up. I had a number of shows covering the event. Hopefully you were able to follow along on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and even the tick and the talk. You lost a lot your of accent, fun. too. That's good. Yes, thank you. It was a lot of fun. It was a, a lot of moving and running around. And I got to tell you, it was a blast. But I told Tom this uh, recently. As much fun as I had, and I, I made some great connections, reconnected with old friends, and solidified uh, th- friendships already. But it didn't quite feel like celebration to me, honestly, because you two weren't there. It, I, and I tr- truly, truly mean that. I know you were texting me a couple of times where kind of you had some freak out moments. And I was like, I, I wish I could be there, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, and I could just feel your, your energy and your, your excitement. So uh, really cool to see that come through. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad. Those late night conversations after the, <laughs> That's right. the lights are off and the hoods the, are the up. Uh-huh. Stories are going around. Yeah. Wow. It was just me. I'd get I get home. I would I get back to the hotel. I I did all my push ups, even on the heavy travel Ooh. days. Um and um I would do those. I would do the Instagram stuff, the video stuff, record my thoughts, and then I'd fall asleep. And I next thing I knew the alarm went off for the next day. <laughs> Let's talk about the main announcements. Uh there's a lot of great announcements. Um the the big one. Uh, is the lot is there's a lot of great live action stuff, but let's just jump into the the main course, right? We'll get to the desserts later, but the main course is that at the end, Kathleen Kennedy came out and she said, uh, "There's been a lot of talk about you've been wondering about the future of Star Wars and film." And I live tweeted this entire thing, and then she said, "We're going to have three movies, and here are the three directors." They're going to take this franchise into three different sections of the Star Wars timeline. And we found out there's going to be one in the very, very past. One that's around five years after Return of the Jedi during the time of the Mandalorian. And one set 15 years after the last events of the Skywalker saga. We're going to talk about them in order, uh, gentlemen. Um, the first one is James Mangold, who is the director yeah. of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. He is going to take us as an audience deep into the past, telling the story of the first Jedi to wield the Force and harness it as a liberating power in an era of chaos and oppression. He mentioned, and in this panel, that he wants it to have a very epic, biblical Ten Commandments type of a feel. Mm -hmm. And it said 25,000, that's right, 25,000 years before the Phantom Menace. Initial thoughts. Yeah, I, I remember this. This came out, and I, I immediately somehow flashed to the Legends book that is called Dawn of the Jedi. I thought, oh, is this a representation of that? And, and it's not. It, there's, there's obviously two separate things, but it, I have a hard time grasping this um, because I just can't think that far back in those years. Right? What was going on? What do? Do I care what's going on? Do I don't want to know the origins of the Jedi? Of course I do. I mean, you know, it's interesting to me. Like, what story is there that is being told, and uh, what? How does that affect the future that we've already know? Like, I think I talked about this in a previous episode of Mandalorian. Like, I feel like we've we've kind of started in the center of of a franchise or branching out, and it's so hard because we know where the end is, and I think they've done good in this, and they've also failed in this, and so. My hope, and uh, of course, James James Mangold is, is a great storyteller, and, and I'm, I can't believe he won't give us something fantastic, but 
you know, there's just a trickle of a doubt in my head that says, okay. you know, are, are these stories going to be interesting? Are, is there more stories to be told here and that I will be interested in as a Star Wars fan? And we've gone too far into the past. Is there, you know, long, long time ago? That that's how it all starts, right? That's the mm. that's where this is. This is a long, long time ago. So, uh, you know, it's interesting to me that. Will this be interesting when it comes to fruition? Um, I think they've definitely learned their bumbling, uh, I'll call it bumbling, since the purchase of Lucasfilm. Uh, I think they've kind of st- got a starter, stutter start, and they've had some really great successes in the franchise. Um, and but I wouldn't say it's it's. I hate to. I always hate to compare it to Marvel successes, but it's different because it is. But I, I really hope this is a success. I want to care about it. So, so you're tre- you're a little trepidatious. I'm a little trepidatious. Okay. Yes. Tom, what about you? I'm certainly curious about it. I mean, to to go back to the to the like to the very. I'm just trying to wrap my brain around <laughs> the very first time the force is discovered, and what that might be like. Who the character? Who is this individual? Who and and is does this person discover the force? Does the force discover them? And what is that story going to look like? I'm super, super curious. Corey, I'm, I'm with you kind of like, is this going to be interesting? What's the thrill of a story like this going to be like? But you know what? We, <laughs> I mean, how many stories do we watch that are origin stories that are the mm-hmm. beginning of something that become like, wow, something big. And what, what I, what I, um, it's not a struggle. I guess what I look forward to is, is we know where it's going. Like we know we've seen sure. many different uh, uh, revelations of the force and uses of the force, especially now from the high Republic, which yeah. is really cool. Cause we've seen them use the force in different ways there in, in um, you know, the, the sequel trilogy, Ray and, Kylo Ren used the force in a way we've never seen before. Ezra. I mean, everyone uses the force in different ways. So what does the origin, who, who, and what does, how does the force bring itself out in that person? And then what's the conflict, you know, is, is it going to be more of an internal conflict or is there going to be two that discover it at the same time. I don't know. It's all speculation, but it all is what goes through my mind when I hear we're going 25,000, 2,500. Thousand. 25,000 <laughs> years into the past. It's a really long time ago in a galaxy. Yeah. Far. Not a long and time so, ago. So, I mean, certainly excited, but it's really hard to wrap my brain around what, what that's going to look like. I, you've already done more speculating than I, than I have. I, I, Honestly, of the three ideas, they're all exquisite ideas. This one might be the one I'm the most excited about hmm. because of the the notion. I mean, when I hear James Mangold, who's a visionary, when I hear him say it's going to be a sweeping biblical epic like the Ten Commandments, I hear epic scale and scope, and that is what Star Wars on the big screen should absolutely be. And if 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 and I've always said becoming is more interesting than being. So to learn the origins of the force will be very spiritual. It'll be very powerful. It'll very be very grandiose in its themes, and it will very much lovingly respect everything that's going to come after it, and it will make all those little force moments mean so much more to us. We're going to learn a lot about the force, True. more about the force theoretically, and I think that's just great. And I love the fact that I didn't have any clue that this was not on – I think it's fair to say this is not on anyone's radar by yeah. any stretch of the imagination – and then, Noah, this is something that we had to look forward to, and it's a possibility, and it's it's an original idea. Star Wars is best when you take some fun elements from the toy box, but you make original ideas. Mm-hmm. And this seems like an extraordinarily novel concept that I'm, as I said, quite excited about and possibly the one I'm the most excited about. You know, one last comment I'll make is you said it's an original idea, and I, I'm going to disagree with you on that because – we already know the light of the Jedi uh, is kind of the previous uh, furthest back we've gone. And so we know that's coming somehow. Mm -hmm. So this isn't necessarily a novel idea. And you, you mentioned it, Tom, too, you know, is this, does the force find this person, this individual, or does this person find the force? You know, there's not 
there's not a whole lot to really like you, it's not rocket science because we know what the force is but maybe do we well yeah i mean right I mean, we, we've just kind of discovered a lot of things throughout you know mm-hmm. the life cycle of the skywalker saga and uh the clone wars and the 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 father's son uh and the and the the, the the, the, the triptych characters from Clone Wars and and what we've seen Grogu do and you said Ray and, and so it's like it's a lot of like powers but is that I got that's all the how yeah. though that's not the why we don't really know mm-hmm. the why why it exists where it came from if, if it's an energy field created by all living things how did that start yeah. we don't know that yeah but do you feel like that's one of those tangible things I don't need to know about right it's like of course I mean it's yeah, dumb. I don't know. It's a fictional it story. Like a, Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 oh, so the real feelings come out. But no, it's just a, it's just a, you know, full full perspective. But from a story perspective, from a fantasy perspective, from sure. a fun genre, a Star Wars perspective, it's fabulous and fascinating. You know, in the real world, what's important is loving your family. Outside of that, it's this is like uh, so unique. Again, I knew, already know how, that you know all the things a force can do, and who's in tune with it, and a lot of the symbolism and mysticism of it, but we don't know how it came to be. I mean, something had to create it unless it existed for eternity, but it's not Alpha and Omega. It's not God. So what is it? I love that idea. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. All right. So the next one is the one that I think um, gave people the biggest sort of, well, I don't know how to describe it. The The other announcement is pretty darn huge too. But I think we as Star Wars fans, and Kathleen Kennedy says this repeatedly, Dave Filoni is literally the, the person who's received the baton from George Lucas. He learned from George Lucas how to tell Star Wars stories with Clone Wars, and they're still friends. And, you know, <laughs> he taught him everything he knows about Star Wars. I mean, that's everything. George created it. And Dave took it in and brought it to a whole different place. And,. He's done a lot of work, but now he's going to actually get to direct his own live action Star Wars film. And I can honestly say, and I think some of you talked about this in your um, and Tom, you talked about it with Greg. I don't know. I can't keep track of your podcasting. You're, you're all over the place, uh, <laughs> which is really me. exciting, fun to listen to. But they, Dave was legitimately emotional and taken by all of this. Like he, he I've seen, I've had the good fortune to see him in person a lot of times. And he seemed very honestly humbled and speechless. And Dave isn't often speechless. He's not a big gabber as far as, I mean, everything he says has power. Yeah. And he doesn't waste his words. And he was kind of speechless. And I, he was overcome, overcome with emotion. I think it's fair to say that if you love Star Wars, and you know who Dave Filoni is. And everyone is so happy for this man that he gets a chance to do this. And the official description is posted on for the press release is that um, Dave Filoni is going to orchestrate the escalating war between the Imperial Remnant and the fledgling New Republic alongside producer John Favreau. They will bring together many of the threads of the Star Wars original series in a cinematic event. So, that sounds... Uh, what I, what I, here's what I don't want. I don't want something made for Disney Plus they put on the big screen. I don't want that. Mm-hmm. I want it to be another level. I want it to be a cinematic Star Wars experience that Dave Filoni gets to take characters from The Mandalorian... And Ahsoka, and the Book of Boba Fett, and uh, the Skeleton Crew, and whatever else, and just make something amazing. Uh, and obviously, this guy loves Star Wars like no other. So this this has the potential to be the most familiar and the most exciting. What an opportunity! Uh, like you mentioned, Dave Filoni, he is the. He's had such such triumph with Star Wars. He's the glue that keeps it together. He really is. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's had such a success, and, I, and everything he does, he does with purpose and and heart and mm-hmm. character and and everything you want to think of. Like he has a passion beyond passion for these characters, these stories, uh, this world, the saga. I mean, I can't think of anybody else who is more passionate than other than George Lucas that like just lives and breathes this stuff other than the a fandom obviously but like he is there making it happen he he's he's doing it and i can't be happy for him to get this opportunity and i think he 
he's ready for it. I, I read a quote that he he said, "I'm more ready than I ever have been uh, mm-hmm. for for this filmmaking experience." And I think that's great. He's learned the chops. He's he's understood. He he's he's done such great things again. Like I said, with some of his characters and and been able to do that and given the ability to do that. Um, I agree with you a hundred percent with this film being a, a film moment, like a, a, a theater experience, not just a, a you know an extra long episode of, of Mandalorian or something. But uh, I would expect this to be an Avengers moment, right? We've seen Captain America, we've seen Iron Man, we've seen Hulk and Thor, and now we see the Avengers. And oh my gosh, we we came and mm-hmm. it blows our minds. Don't even think that's going to be possible, right? This is what I feel like this is building up to. This is my favorite. Uh, uh, announcement from this this trilogy here for cool. this, for these announcements. So because of that reason, I think it's this has been Dave's building moment to this this he's risen to this, and I think this is definitely his time to make his stamp on the Star Wars world and say, you know, this is it. I'm 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 done. I've done all this to come to this point. So I'm excited for this. I can't be more happy for him, and can't wait to see it uh, come to the screen. Yes, Tom, you talk about. Dave Filoni, anyone who's who knows Star Wars knows Dave Filoni. Uh, a story I have to share is as I was watching this on the television, um, streaming it on the television, my daughter Kaylee walks in and it's Dave on a on a uh, panel and Kaylee walks in. And she goes, I know that guy. <laughs> and I said, why? Why do you think you know him? She goes, well, I remember the hat doesn't he have something to do with like Ezra and chopper? And <laughs> I said, you, I said, yep. oh, his name's Dave Filoni. And she goes, yes, that's right. I, that I would not have ever believed that my daughter would know like a writer, a producer, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. she knows the character, she knows the stories, but to know the, the other side of it, I was just super impressed. And something that Dave said that is a, is a um, expanding on what you were saying, um, Dan, about, um, how he he learned from George Lucas. Mm-hmm. The comment I think I made that maybe is what you're referring to is I felt like as I watched this weekend of celebration from Friday through Monday, I felt like I saw the metamorphosis of a man yep. who who went from being what he is to what he is going to become. And we saw that through the emotion that he portrayed, through the words that he shared. And one thing that really resonated with me in that um, mentorship with George Lucas is he is, is Dave Filoni said, I learned from George and now I'm trying to teach the new, you know, the newbies. That's not, that wasn't a quote. That's my paraphrase. But, but, and I was like, that, that's the step. That is the step. And I, I'm with you, Corey. I think this, I think in the household, in my household, this is my favorite announcement um, because of the work that I know he does first, but also the characters that I'm kind of expecting to show up right. in a story like this oh. are characters that I have really come to be, I feel like very close with. Mm-hmm. And so to see them on a big screen in some sort of a climactic story that's going to drive it towards, you know, the sequel trilogy or maybe a thread that just goes alongside the sequel trilogy, whatever it is, I can't wait to see that happen. Um, I, I think that's, I think that's everything I need to say about that. I, I was, I have other things, but I think that I can stop there that I'm just super, super excited about this one. This is Vanessa Marshall, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. It's got the opportunity to be uh, so powerful and also so, somewhat familiar, which isn't a bad thing, but it's because it's going to have a lot of characters that we already know. And it's wonderful. I mean, I, I hope it becomes a trilogy, but who knows? There was no talk of that at all the last one is the one that was the big home run that in that arena people just gasped and cheered (laughs) it it were tears it was amazing kevin kennedy said that 
Uh, director Charmin Obeyed Shinwa is going to make a movie 15 years set after the last events of the Skywalker saga, which of course is the rise of Skywalker. And they and she came out, um, Charmin did, and she she actually talked about, you know, you've got to have a a master Jedi that's very very powerful. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, yeah, like Yoda, but Yoda's not alive. And then she says, so we've got our Jedi master. Would you like to meet her? And they played Ray's theme. Uh, John Williams is Ray's theme. Uh-huh. And I have goosebumps now. Everyone just exploded. And I saw Daisy Ridley walking out. And they said, it's, they said, first she said, it's Ray, Daisy Ridley. And in my mind, for like a second, I was like, oh, yeah, Daisy Ridley, that makes sense because of the story. <laughs> what? And all of a sudden, I was like, wow. And here she comes and she's really happy. And I actually had really good seats. And she's walking out there. And I was like, oh my gosh. And we were looking around. And I was looking at Clayton. And he was looking at me. And we we're just losing our minds. And she seemed so happy and so emotionally taken uh, aback by it. Uh, just the adulation. And there's so many people there that for them, this is her, their Star Wars, Ray. Ray is everything. Ray is oh. their Luke Skywalker. Ray is their Anakin Skywalker. He's, she's oh. their Obi Wan. And so this is the one that's the most like, feels the most like, like the nostalgia Star Wars. The Mangolds is the most original idea. The Mandoverse one is the most familiar. But the run with Ray has the connection to Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford and Carrie sure, Fisher. Man. So that one has a very special uh, Star Wars feel to it. And I, I couldn't be more thrilled about it, especially because we get a timeline. And so Mangled is Dawn of the Jedi, which is a very unique drawing that you can look at. The Corey, I'm sure you think it's cool. The Old Republic, I don't ever remember seeing a symbol of that. The High Republic, of course. Fall of the Jedi, Ran the Empire, and Age of the Rebellion are very familiar to us. The New Republic, the Rise of First Order, and then when they announced the 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 Ray thing, they expanded the screen to the right, and New Jedi Order popped up as they announced Ray, and it was it was great, hmm. great, great, great. You know, uh, I couldn't be more thrilled for for Daisy Ridley and and continuing the saga. Um, I have a pros and cons. My pro is. As a singular film, not a tr- they announce a trilogy. They're not trying to go for mm-hmm. the Agreed. whole game. They're just saying, "Hey, this is the next next deal, right?" Mm-hmm. They're not trying to propose anything, but it, it just it, it tailors into this, that, like you said, the Skywalker feel. Like, okay, I, we're kind of getting this a uh, grouped piece. Feels here. more like Episode Ten than anything, and it will be. And I mean, you, they can't get away from that, right? You can't just say, "Oh, it's just a, it's like a side mission." No, it's this is the, she's the she's the link to the past, right? She the, her character, so. And speaking of past, this is the con for me. 15 years after the events of Skywalker Saga. So mm-hmm. now, now we're here we are, 15 years. Well, what's this 15-year gap? What what has happened? Because I know, obviously, coming into the prequel trilogy, I'm sorry, the sequel trilogy, uh, once Lucasfilm, or Disney bought Lucasfilm, we got these these you know these older gruffer characters of our younger characters that are like there's time has passed and what has happened between this time where are they at now now we have to kind of explain all that and one thing I think Lucasfilm doesn't do all that great is now here's a comics tie-in and now here's a book tie-in and now here's a you know a, a show tie-in and like which are all great in their own right but I have to go consume that to get the full picture and. I, I don't I don't like that. I mean, it's just it's difficult for me as a fan to try to keep up with those things. I think they're all great. You can consume them you want, but I feel like it's just a lot. So we have fifteen year gap, if you will, to to know what what happened, what what is happening, you know. Hmm. And so that's that's a con. Now I'm not saying they can't write the ship and they can't. Or say, maybe hey, they can do animated stuff or Disney Plus well, stuff that fills in the like because basically will, Mando though. is filling in those gaps between Return of the Jedi and the the Force Awakens. They are. It is, but it's not that that's not that Skywalker lineage or the, the bigger piece of the puzzle necessarily. Mm-hmm. I mean I, I'm I think the I problem they've run into stuff. is that yes. if they only make it about I didn't mean I'm sorry for interrupting you. Um if they only make it about Skywalkers then it really is over. Uh, so you have to incorporate, expand your net and make it a little bit wider of a reach. But I totally well, just, hear you. It's just that 15-year totally gap is all. I mean, I, I, get, sure. I get it's a long, saying. It's a long stretch. Yeah, it is. For sure. It's a long stretch. And, you know, and even more crazy is between, you know, Return of the Jedi and uh, The Force Awakens is 30 years. Did that bother yeah. you as well? I mean, the, to that, that was kind of like... <laughs> That's weird because 
the purchase of of Lucasfilm by Disney, and that you know there were the, you know some time has passed uh, as as fandom has been, you know, and the but actors did, of age like Mark. Of course, Hamill I I, and, I can yeah. get behind that. Like I understand that's just kind sure. of the way things are, but they did throw out you know thirty years worth of 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 legends material and comic books. They've all written all these great stories. Not to say they can't go and mine for gold over there, and Dave Filoni obviously has. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's just a weird connection. I I don't know how you write that idea, or you just keep going down that path and going further, further, further out. So we'll just have to wait and see, I guess, and see how they do with this. Like I said before, um, they've they've had some stumbling along the way, and I think they're trying to correct that. So that's encouraging to me. And and again, that's the pro is Daisy Ridley. I think she'll shine on the screen. I'm excited to see what she she's she's going to be doing this new film and, and her, how her characters evolved and into a master of all things. So mm-hmm. uh, there's some aggression there. And how did she learn the force? Is it just her, you know, out in the desert, just swinging around? Um, so we'll see. Um, excited for that. So I see that actually, I see that 15 years as that's a pro for me because mm-hmm. I love that unknown of how did we get from a to I don't know A to B where is the A.5 and what are those because I'm invested as a Star Wars fan I want to know those stories and so when those stories are released granted when it's in print that's hard they even they even um, address that in the High Republic uh, panel by saying we push some of phase three back I don't know if there's if there's maybe some underlying just deadlines not being made or something like that. But they said, we push those deadlines back to give people a chance to get caught up. We understand that there's a lot of text and there's a lot to read and there's a lot to catch up on. And so nonetheless, I love that that like when when Force Awakens was announced and they said 30 years, I was like, what's been going on? Mm-hmm. What and it explain you know and so so as a fan it gr- it builds anticipation for me. Mm-hmm. The thing I hope that this movie does and I'm ex- why I'm excited about it and and earlier I said the Filoni movie is what in my household that I'm most excited about. This movie that we're talking about with uh, the um, uh, what is it the New Jedi Order mm-hmm. that is resonating with my daughter. Yeah, right. because Ray is her hero. Ray is 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 her is is that's her Luke Skywalker. Always dressed up as her all the time. I I know, I know it every premiere. And as a teenage girl, she sort of her her Star Wars fandom has has faded a bit. She still loves the story. She still appreciates that I'm excited about it. Um, But when I told her that Daisy, I said, "Look at Daisy Ridley's up there, and they're not talking about Ray in the sequel trilogy." I said, "They're talking about a new movie." And she stopped and it, she stopped in her tracks and paid attention. And I was like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Maybe I'll get her back. <laughs> and by the time this movie comes out, she'll be graduating from high school. And, and in, in my mind, losing those teenage peer pressure things and, and being in a, in a place in her life where it's okay to be nerdy and it's okay to be, you know, whatever. And I'm, I'm praying and fingers crossed that that brings her back to the fandom hardcore. Anyway, another thing I'm excited about with this movie is I sure I, what I hope this movie does, besides tell a wonderful, awesome story that we don't even know that we need, <laughs> is I hope it brings credibility and validation to the sequel trilogy. I hope yeah. in this movie that we can look back and say that it kind of packages this idea, this whole thing together. And I see now where Ray is the Jedi master. I don't know. I don't know how you do that. And and maybe that's, that might be a pie in the sky hope, but it sits there for me because there's nothing more than I want than, than the people to appreciate the sequel trilogy as much as we now appreciate the prequel trilogy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course the original, I think I that'll happen over time. Going, I, yeah, I, th- I think have one I, the prequels. I yeah, That's right, fair. exactly. And so I hope that this that this film sort of brings that to light um, to yeah. help us with down that road. So super cool. And yeah, I didn't realize they played the Ray theme when she came out. That is awesome. Oh. I, couldn't, I didn't hear that when they brought it her out. Cool. So it was cool. Awesome. The ovation the was electric. Nuts. Yeah, it was yeah. it was really electric. 
listening to Coffee with Kenobi. You are with Dan Z, the podcast you're looking for. This is... <laughs> Well, very good. I know there's a bunch of announcements with the Disney Plus stuff. We got to see a lot of trailers. Some of the trailers, like the Acolyte, uh, there were sections of Ahsoka. They were only for that room, uh, which we'll save for another time. I also got to see six minutes of the middle of the Indiana Jones film, which I talked about uh, yeah, on the last uh, episode as well. But we'll save that for another time. This is just a, really an espresso shot. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> or not, but. So... Uh, Tom, thank you so much again for coming back on Coffee with Kenobi. Please let everybody know about what's going on with Teachers in the Dungeon and where they can find you. Yeah, I'm on Twitter at DraftLine, D-R-A-F-T-L-I-N-E. That's where I talk about Dungeons and Dragons or Star Wars or just about anything that's on my mind. Um, Yeah, Teachers in the Dungeon. Thanks for bringing that up. It is a podcast about Dungeons and Dragons, the game, the rules, the creators, uh, all aspects. Dan Reem and I uh, host, uh, co-host that show. And um, if you are into adventure and great storytelling, give us a shot. We are at Dungeon Teach or Dungeon Teach or at Dungeon Teachers on Twitter. We are Teachers in the Dungeon on Facebook and Instagram. And you can catch our show on any major podcast catcher. And Mr. Club, what's going on in the world of of Clubdom? Oh my, all kinds of things. Yeah, you, you can catch up with me and hear about my thoughts on these new announcements on Twitter. I'm posting all kinds of, I kind of freaked out a little bit too. I, I know when this stuff happens during a work day, no work gets done. Uh, I'm usually tweeting out things. So you can catch me on Twitter at Quarry Club, uh, posting there. I'm more excited. Uh, rank number one on my 2023 movies is Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny. I cannot wait. I'm very excited about that. Uh, and if you've got more thoughts and you want to reach out to me further, feel free to email me, Corey C at coffeewithkenobi.com. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. If no one here-